Welcome to everyone that's uh, joined in. My name is Sonia Small here. I'm originally from Cape Town, South Africa, but live in the Netherlands now for 33 years and um, live just outside of Amsterdam, about 30 kilometers outside of Amsterdam in a place called Baden. That's where I'm broadcasting now from, from my studio in Baden. I'm married to Marco, amazing guy, who um, is all into sales and marketing. So that's uh, his forte. And I'm an artist. I'm a podcaster and I'm a course creator. I am just passionate about art, about creativity. I love helping artists succeed, build businesses, set up structures around their creativity. That's why this community is there. That's why I'm active on the different social channels and also on my website. Because art is important and is relevant, especially in these times, to be the voice, to be the conscience, to be the expression, to be the beauty. Art is everywhere and we need a world filled with art and filled with creativity, problem solvers in all shapes and sizes. And uh, that it is definitely possible to have a sustainable business around your creativity. That's my passion. Because when I went to art school, they told me that I was an artist. I'd learned how to paint and how to draw, but I had no idea how to run an art business. So I went on a search. I researched lots of artists and I saw what worked, what didn't work, what, you know, why were some artists more successful? And it didn't have anything to do with luck or with chance or with, you know, situations. These were artists that found systems and found ways to communicate their art more effectively with beautiful photography, effective online presence, um, writing about the art, getting platforms, getting more visible. So there's so much you can do to become more visible with your art. And that's what I teach uh, in my course, the Working Artist course, which uh, opens its doors once a year. Very exciting group this year. We have uh, artists also from all over the world and we're now in module number seven, which is all about photography. And we have an expert uh, teacher coming in on Friday. So it's a really wonderful uh, community and uh, learning to build up those structures. So if that's something that you're considering, you want to know how to set up business structures around your creativity, I can highly recommend the Working Artist course. It is closed at the moment for enrollment, but next year um, in the spring, the European spring, March, we'll be opening up again and you're welcome to join. But there's a wait list. So head over to the, um, the website. My website is on your small If you want to join the wait list, you can get just stay tuned and I can send you information how you can best prepare for this course. It's a 12 week course, intensive with all kinds of practical lessons. Um, teachers, ex experts that share their knowledge about uh, the demanding art uh, life and also about uh, the industry, creative industry and what you can do to prepare yourself but also to bring your art to the market more effectively. So that's the Working Artist course starting March next year. The community is there, you're all part of the community, otherwise you wouldn't be uh, in this uh, session. The door, um, there is, uh, this is a, a private group and really is there to connect with one another. Very often we're busy in our studios alone or you know in our workplaces and it's so important to be connected with other creative people, people that speak your language or understand just the nuances of being a working artist because you not only have to make your art, you also are running a business and that's sometimes where there's so much yeah, tension, it's exhausting, it's, it can be overwhelming and uh, we can be there to support one another. I think the most important thing for me is to create vision for you to see what's possible. And I think so many of us have had those, that inner critic or that those voices that saying that it's not possible, that it's difficult for artists um, to earn a living with their creativity, that it's next to impossible to always be a hobby. And hopefully through my resources, through the things that the content that I put out, that you start seeing vision, the seeing how important art is, how intertwined it is in our culture, in our communities, and how necessary it is, and your place, how you can create revenue streams around those things that you are passionate about and are getting better and better and better at as you're learning to grow as an artist, as a skilled craftsman person. So that vision, that's 
my big hope is that you'll be inspired to see what's possible. So welcome to the session all about storytelling. I love this topic. Uh, this is something that we could, of course, spend many sessions on. But I'm getting an understanding that you can use storytelling incorporated in your communication, in what you're writing, how you're going to use your photos, that you can intentionally choose words to promote and to sell your art. And that it doesn't have to be salesy or sleazy. It can be very authentic. It could be your story. And there's nothing more authentic and more powerful than your story because it's yours. There's no one else that has it. You, it's, you are unique. You have your story. You have your process. You have your past, your present, and your future, your dreams and your goals that you have before you. And that you can incorporate in words and start sharing that. So we're going to be looking at two aspects in this session, how to promote and how to sell your work, because these are two different messages um, through storytelling. And when you're promoting your work, of course, you can use your website, you can use your social channels, you can you know, have, be, uh, have a shop where you're promoting your work, whether it's physical or whether it's online, brochures, presentational materials, the list goes on and on and on where you are actually promoting your work. So this is not the actual selling, but you're promoting. And then the selling part can be, you know, that place on your website where you have physical products, where you are writing text, uh, words to sell. So the action is selling, not inspiring or educating or showing process, but you're selling. So you're adding a product description, for example, or you're pitching at a pitching for a commission, or you have a certain a licensing deal, you have to pitch in person or pitch online through an email. You have an opening of an exhibition. That's a moment where you want to, it's a sell moment where you want to share your story because you are inviting people to engage with your art and then to buy. And so different places where you can tell your story. Now I can give you all the storytelling techniques and there are many of them, which is quite theoretical and there are many structures around storytelling, but they will never work if you've got nothing to say. And the first step in this whole process is to be interesting. People want to engage and are attracted to interesting people. Now it doesn't mean you have to have Oscar winning film like life, but it means that you have an open vision, that you are living an inspired life. And that can mean many things, that you are being open-minded, you're reading, you're uh, having content, you're consuming content that's inspiring, that you are then uh, sharing with other people, that you are inspired. Just, you know, if you walk to the supermarket, you can walk with your head down. Or, you know, like we do in the Netherlands, we walk or we cycle or you're in your car or wherever you are in nature, you have an open vision. You are allowing yourself to be inspired. And I mean, as I think for artists, that's a given. You already are in processes where you are allowing those stimuli, those impressions to create words and images which you're going to translate into artworks. These are thumbnails of TED Talks. I don't know, I'm a TED Talk freak. I love TED Talks. I love to hear people's opinions. Uh, they are just the craziest kinds of uh, TED Talks out there. But these people would never have been invited on these TED Talks if they had nothing to say. They have developed a point of vision. They have developed a story. They have developed an opinion about how they feel about things. They have got some quirky vantage points, vision points from where they are looking at life. And some of them are controversial. Some of them are like, okay, <laughs> but it makes for interesting engagement and it's very compelling to listen to. So I think uh, there are many platforms that artists can use to share stories, but you'll never be invited if you haven't developed a story developed an opinion you know if you're just that gray mouse and you you think everything's okay we're just copying everyone else you don't really have formed your story or formed your opinion it's not going to be very interesting for people to consume and to engage with and that's the same for a podcast if you want to be invited to a podcast what is your story 
you can start thinking about that. This is an amazing platform. There are podcasts all over the world with different uh, kinds of you know art podcasts where they interview artists. It can be an amazing platform for you to share more about your art, your art story, your beliefs, your convictions, your inspiration, or your latest collection, that what you're making, and you could reach new audiences. But then you need to have something to say. The local newspaper doesn't even have to be the major stream press, whether this is online or offline, or you know whether it's a written uh, blog or whether it's a physical local newspaper. Every town, village, city has a newspaper. They will be printing something about you if you have something to say, if you start sharing your story, if you start having a message, a point of vision, then there are, there's possibilities for you to share your story. I'm just curious within the group, the people that are here, and welcome for the people that I haven't uh, seen at the beginning that have uh, joined the session. Have you used platforms? Has anyone uh, been able to share their story on different platforms? Is it something that you are have honed your story or is that you or are you still looking for ways to develop your story how is this topic of storytelling um, intertwined with your art life is it are you beginning are you discovering or you already have your story you're clear about your uh, vision and i'm just very curious to see um, who's in the house and uh, then i can also um, have a bit of impression. Hi Jess, good to have you here. And Judith and Dido and Carla and Anya, good that you joined guys. Let me know in the comment area what, um, where are you in your storytelling process? Is it something that's clear for you? Is it something that's a little murky? Or something that you've never considered before? <laughs> No, Jess, I didn't put the thumbnail of my podcast. I could have done that indeed, <laughs> but well observed. So let me know in the comments where you are in your process. There are so many channels. There's so many possibilities for you to share your story, small and larger. You know, you don't all have to head to TED Talks uh, to begin with. You can start locally and small on your website, in your social channels, the posts that you're posting. Your um, a local press, local radio station, local television stations, they are always looking for content. And if you have a ready store, a story or an interesting point of vision, point of view, you make an interesting guest. Judith is from Yorkshire. She has a new blog. Uh, really helps her with her narrative, also Instagram. Great, Judith. And Dido says, yes, I had an article in a regional newspaper and was guest at a local radio station. This week I'm a, I'm a guest again in a local radio show because I paint portraits of pop icons. Dido, would you say that having that point of vision, having a clear style helps you get uh, the press interested, that you have been on the radio, you've been in local uh, uh, newspapers, maybe national newspapers, is that helping you? Heidi, good to have you here. And Jess says, I'm starting to develop my art business. And she has used storytelling before. Oh, that's good. Now, Jess, I'm really curious how you're going to incorporate that in your art business. So you can use all those that knowledge that you have and incorporate that into your messaging um, in different shapes and sizes. So... And Mariana says she had an article published in a local magazine. I will do it differently next time, but it was a learning, learning curve. Mariana, what would you do differently? What was the learning curve? Please share in the group. Just threw me out of the group. Just one second, guys. Okay, let's see.
Dean says, um, I'm having a challenge writing my artist statements. Good to have you here. <laughs> what is your challenge? Put it in the comments. I'd love to hear what's, uh, what you're dealing with. And uh, Jan is using a blog, which is attached to his website. And he's also used Facebook and Instagram. And he says, I've hidden my story that I used to work uh, with IT, but I'd like to rewrite it. Um, my story of being Ramon. Ramon was a guest uh, two weeks ago and he was sharing how he w worked in the corporate space and how he's added that and made that part of his story. He's very active on LinkedIn. So his audience, a lot of the commissions that he does with his sculpting, which is a high price, high end product, that he's got commissions through LinkedIn because they're the decision makers and that he's added that and made that part of his story. And we had that discussion with the Anya too, who has the IT background, as she said, had removed that from her story, but how that can strengthen her story, that she's made that, how inspiring is that? And I think so many people that work in corporate have secret ambitions or these longings to explore their creativity, but haven't you know, taken the steps or haven't had opportunities. And how inspiring is it to hear someone's story that has taken the steps? It doesn't all have to be roses and moonshine and, you know, all happiness. There are struggles in that uh, journey, but that it really could add and enhance the story. So good, Anya, that you are considering that. Dido says it helps, is helping me because pop icons um, will help us relate to their music. So she's, Dido, please have a look at her um, website also at her feed and uh, great that you're getting more and more exposure did a clear um, style also and um, yeah lovely story around of course music that it is uh, written and uh, sung stories all that are uh, the beautiful lyrics so that is a very interesting genre that you're working in and Anya's been a guest in a local podcast for the business forum which is a great way to share You would also do it differently as well. Okay, more storytelling, I think. Let's see what Judith says. I didn't realize that I had so much to say about art until I specifically started a blog. Not a, not a business for me at this point, but I feel it gives me to, a place to be online, however small it is. Judith, good. That's a start. And uh, you know, just being there, showing up, sharing what makes you passionate and uh, great that you I have started a blog and that you can share. And, you know, very often, I totally agree with you, very often you think, I've got nothing to say. <laughs> Who wants to listen to what I've got to say? And then when you start writing things down and start formulating the things that you feel so deeply about, you realize that you actually have a lot to say. So it's good when you're developing your storytelling also to start writing, journal, put get it out there because very often we feel things but we haven't actually found ways to articulate it, to add words. And so that really helps to get our ideas, make it more concrete so that we can see them. Uh, Jess says, I thought, uh, for example, work in a series, make good photos and even film, film it and post it on my social. Uh, and every day I reveal a little bit of my story to hopefully motivate people to follow their passions and next uh, and, and next to that, my work. Yeah, so you're combining it with your uh, with your other job. Uh, definitely, you know, there's nothing like a story to have a little bridge or to have a cliffhanger, to have something people to follow along. That's why I love Instagram stories. It's a wonderful concept of Instagram because you can really tell little chapters or little bits of a story. You can take, you can do 24 hour story. So every two hours, you're releasing a pin, releasing some artwork, a graphic that takes people to the next part of your story. And you can keep the conversation going using that as a story form. So enough places and good that you guys are active and also challenge to take the next step to add that element of storytelling in your communication so that you develop a point of vision. And I think that was the biggest thing that I discovered with between successful artists and the not so successful artists is the having that point of vision. 
having an opinion and it won't be everyone's opinion you won't appeal to everyone that's just a given that's something we need to deal with if you are finding it difficult you know to feel uh, that you feel rejected or people are not um, embracing what you're doing you are very successful when people don't uh, start unfollowing you or don't agree with you that's the role of our our profession and that doesn't mean we all need to be activists it can, we have all different uh, mandates and callings and you know why we're making our art and reasons to do it but find your voice and hone in on that and have the confidence to share that loudly and boldly and so that you can start being recognized for the things that you have to say a great quote i use quite often in my teachings and my courses is that people will forget what you said people will forget what you did but people will never forget how you make them feel and isn't a story a great way to have those transporters of feelings it's like a beautiful piece of music a story transports emotions so you can write all kinds of dry facts on your website you know like i was born here and i was went to school here and sometimes it's good to have a resume but if you're writing your about me page for example add emotion add a story because people will remember the story it'll evoke a feeling to them they can associate that walk in the forest or the frustration that you felt about being rejected at a certain point in your life people will associate so adding that emotive layer is powerful and stories are those transporters i've always loved stories yes this is me <laughs> when i was very little there on the right with my brother and my mom she was always like a great moment at the end of the day to have story time and then you could just be transported and i could be the princess and i could be the the hero i could be the villain you could all imagine i think this is how we learn as children this is how we are uh, a little flight simulators of life envisioning um, in through in and through stories and throughout our culture developments uh, here we see the bushmen for example are still using the power of storytelling cultures have uh, uh, shared uh, memories um, the history have gone on through storytelling socializing of course now with our online presence all use stories to communicate and to relate you know people ask you how was your weekend what do you tell them people are interested um, to hear and to relate and to communicate so stories are transporters that can educate you know as i mentioned the flight simulators of life really to uh, understand and to connect to preserve culture to pre preserve history and uh, shows us what's possible. Story, anything is possible, the imagined, the, the realistic, powerful stuff. And we're going to look in this session how you can use that power if you uh, want to promote and sell your art. Whether you do that in person or online, we are, the world will be opening up one day again, so we'll have far more in-person events too. And of course, using that online space to share your story. Three different sections that i want to look at in this session is the about me page where you can tell your story perfect place pitching whether that's in person or through an email and then product presentation all places where you can share your story just a brief um, basis of uh, storytelling if you look at this uh, timeline a story has a beginning and an ending whether that you're writing an email it has a beginning a subject line and has an ending a signature or however you want to end your story your message so that's a given there's a beginning and an ending of the things that you're making whether you choose to have a cliffhanger then you can continue the, the chapters after that in a story or in um, how you're going to segment your website but in principle that story you're writing has a beginning and an end and then we look above the line and below the line the middle line is the um, neutral line not a very interesting place to start a story usually above the neutral line or below a neutral line that's an interesting place for people to start engaging when you start to share uh, your art story you can start above the line which is positive that you all you know for example always love creativity I knew always I wanted to be an artist. This is something 
that I've been, you know, um, um, always been painting, drawing. So it's positive. There's not, you know, you're above the neutral line. But there comes a moment when you felt struggles, when you felt uh, there was a conflict, there was a villain. Every good story has a villain, whether that's your paintbrush or whether that's um, uh, outside uh, forces, culture that you lived in all the time, or a COVID can be your villain. How did that affect your passion for creativity? And then taking steps to get up into the pockets. Every story, you know, our stories are there to inspire and we don't need to be perfect or complete. But any good storyline ends in a positive, is inspiring, is thought provoking. So something happens to get you ready, prepared and tuned to continue your journey. You can start at the neutral line, as I said, not a very interesting place to start because it's not positive or negative, but most storylines start in the negative. Didn't have, didn't know, confused, poor, no love, loss, you know, there's loss. And the storyline then goes up into something happens where you go into the positive, you meet the love of your life, you encounter a certain exhibition, you were inspired by a certain person or a certain quote or a certain encounter that you had and you go on your journey so there's a certain time there's a line which makes it interesting and then you end start in the negative but you end in the positive so this is a very just a graphic um, thing for you to think about if you're not used to storytelling you can start your about page in the positive or in the negative you know you have to know where's that you want your audience to go what is the that you want them to feel and to remember about your pitch, about your about story or about the presentation, about your work. First, let's hone in on your website. A lot of words also on websites, you know, they have to remember that people aren't reading, they're glancing. So you need to be very intentional about where you're putting your content. So not plonking everything on your homepage, and uh, telling your whole story elaborate, people won't be reading. They'll be glancing and leaving because people are distracted. We don't read anymore. We're glancing. So you have to use your headlines very strategically. And you need to use that power of storytelling to entice people, to give them little appetizer to want to find out more. And that's, of course, is the power of storytelling. We start with a home page. That's where people land up when they uh, type in your URL. And surveys have shown that people go from the home page to the about me page. And why is that? Is because people want to know why am I spending my five minutes here? Who is this person? Who's this artist? What has she done? What has he done to spend my time here? Or is it validated why I'm on this website? So that's why the about me page is so strategic because you need to in a few sentences tell people, yes, it's your, worth your while. I'm, you know, this, I make great art. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm passionate about and draw them in to find out more. So they're going to your contact page or they're going to your web shop or they're going to read more. And so my advice would be give a little bit of a snippet on your home page. So a photo of yourself and a few lines of your story and start with an introduction and end with a little cliffhanger in your story so that you have that read more button and then go to a more elaborate about me page. So it's the teaser on the home page of your story and then take them to a more elaborate about page where you can expound and share more of your story, not only in words, in headlines, quotes, and in images. So people, so it's bite size. It's not like this whole big book they have to read. They need to be enticed and uh, helped through your story. And you, of course, are artists, visual people. So you add the right elements so that you can take them on that journey through your story. So the about page, a great place, of course, to start to share your story. It's not about facts. Remember the quote, Maya Angelou, it's about feeling. How can you add emotion to that story? And you add differential layers. I've added some bullet points in gray that you can go through in your own time. Um, all about the elements on the about page. Get very clear what you want people to know about you. When you start to think about your story, there can be different starting points. You know, When you're writing your story, what is it that you want people to know about you? 
in the about page you can't add everything it's not a whole you know it's not your whole life story it's a certain anecdote it's a certain moment in your art career when things changed when things when you had aha moments or when you were inspired or when you decided this was going to be a profession or when you decided to make a certain series get clear about what you want people to know start there and what is it that you want them to feel what emotion excited you want them to have that suspense you want them to actually with the words that you're using, get a better understanding of the techniques that you're using. Is it hot and sticky, like working with wax, or is it wet and ooey and gluey and gooey with the clay that you're using? Using emotive words to get people into your frame of mind, to get them to see what you are seeing and feeling. And then remember, what is it that you want them to remember? How are they going to remember after they're reading you? Are they going to, you know, what are they going to be feeling? So take time uh, this week this weekend to brainstorm about those things how are you going to share that story because storytelling is all about connecting with others and helping people see what you see a quick look at the narrative arc so all stories have components of this narrative arc just to give you some framework because you know as you were saying also in the comments that sometimes you get overwhelmed you know you love painting and you love so many things but how are you going to put this into words how are you going to write that artist statement how are you going to write that about page these are ingredients that you can take and this is all classic examples of storytelling most stories if you look at a video or you know film you look read a book it's all put into this narrative arc it all starts with an introduction it doesn't have to but this is the classical timeline of a narrative arc so you introduce yourself hi my name is Sonia Small here I'm an art coach course creator and a podcast when I went to the art academy I learned how to paint and how to draw but I had no idea how to run an art business conflict I had no idea I felt totally distraught I had I was um I knew this was not something that I wanted to do. The all points, and it doesn't have to be super dramatical or a negative. It's a moment where something changes. Something happens. You go to an exhibition. You are in. You are just touched by you know certain theater piece that you've seen that you know like are oh, you living below the the line you know that you need to be doing and working in a different field you want to express more of your art or that you are you know have changed your technique it could be all points there's a moment where something happens this is that spark we take you on a journey this is the rising action you take steps like i went you know looked uh, interviewed lots of artists i read lots of books i went on courses i really trained myself to get a better understanding of how the art world works, how um, business works, why is it that some artists are successful, why other artists are not successful. I learned lessons. And this can be, you know, big abstract lessons, it can be very practical lessons. What steps did you take to what triggered that conflict? Which leads us to the climax. So if you look at the boy meets girl scenario, <laughs> boy is a lonely meets a girl and the, all kinds of things happen the impossible the unreachable the um the other um the other person all these actions just if you look at movies or look at read books you'll see this um something that comes back all the time and then finally there's the kiss the love is uh, rewarded that's the climax and with your art story, that could be that moment that you won a prize. Could be that moment when you realized, wow, you know, I finally got accepted to that uh, art course that I wanted to take, or that you had this exhibition, or you finished your body of work. It could be, depending you know, on how what your goal is of your story. There's that climax, there's that moment of uh, aha, and then there's the falling in the action. That's sort of the, the epilogue of a story, where there's the resolution. And usually that's when a point is made, 
when a lesson is learned, when things come together, all those little loose ends are tied up and there's a resolution. And they could be like 10 years later in stories and that would be number nine. Not every story has a nine. So this is a classical narrative arc, the beginning, the middle and the ending. This is how you could write your about, uh, about me story. But you could also change things around. And that's when things start getting interesting. When you're starting with the climax, when I held that uh, reward or when I won a prize, I felt. So you're starting with a climax. Or you can start with your resolution. Art matters. So you're starting with a resolution with a point you're trying to make. And then you start with the introduction and the journey that you took on there. Or you start with your rising actions. What steps have you taken to bring it to the realization that art matters? And then you introduce yourself. So you can see these are diff different aspects of storytelling structures that you can mix around. And that's when things become interesting. Just make sure it's coherent and people understand what you're trying to say. The DEP, the DEP, broken it down into three points that definitely need to be in your storytelling structures. You start off with it's an email, whether you are talking to someone at an in-person event, when you have an exhibition, standing at that booth at that art fair and people ask me, you know, ask you, what is your uh, art about? Describe. So not facts. Remember, there's that people want to remember what you felt. Describe situations. Add emotion and make a point. Any good pitch, any good story has the dip to it. You describe a specific moment. So if you want to write your about page, there is an exercise in this session where you're going to brainstorm specific moments when art mattered to you, when you had certain aha epiphanies, when you're thinking, oh, this is uh, really crucial in my art career. Could be at a younger age, could be at a later age. Brainstorm those moments. So start your story describing a specific moment that had impact. Where were you? What did you see? When were you there? So it's in a specific time frame. You know, to add all of them, but describe the moment. Don't just state it, but describe it. Then you add the layer of the emotion. How did that make you feel? How did that affect you? So you had the opening of your exhibition. It was at a certain place and, you know, the, the, the described then the setting, the mood, the, the ambiance. How did that make you feel? The elated, excited, uh, terrified, uh, exhausted, add that emotive layer. And how did that affect you? That moment when you were rejected at the Art Academy. How did that make you feel? So you walked in there with your portfolio. It was this huge building with all these artists and you thought, I'm never going to make it. This art world, what, you know, it's, it's just too challenging or, you know, there's so many other artists out there. What do I still have to say? I feel terrified. I feel totally overwhelmed. Adding that emotive layer. And then the third point is, the third part is the point, is the why of your story. You're describing a certain situation, you are adding that emotion, and then you're coming to the point of why. Why is it important? It made me realize when I went through that uh, um, the application process at the art school that art mattered enough for me and that it could make a difference, and that I wanted to share my unique voice, or that art school wasn't for me, that I was going to follow my own trajectory, that I was going to discover my own. I'm going to make my own way. I'm going to go my own journey. Whatever it is, the point that you're trying to make, the why, why is it important? And why are you telling the story, depending on what setting you are communicating, whether that's the about page or a pitch or an email, you want to come to a point in your story. So definitely when you're writing a pitch or, or doing a promotional email, the point is that you want people to go to your website or you want people to engage with your art, go to my shop. The point is that you want people to see the world through your eyes and that how you are inspired, that they too will be inspired, that they will also have that piece of inspiration on their wall. And to do that, they can go and there's an action. So every good piece, every good 
especially when you're promoting work and selling work, it has a call to action, an action place. Go through, um, take some time to brainstorm ideas because, you know, as we were already, and I love that example in the group, uh, is that you realize that you have far more to say um, than you actually know. And it's by brainstorming and just, even if you just have a piece of paper when you, you know, making your art, and if things pop up in your head, anecdotes, store, you know, little stories, little moments where you interacted with the art or art interacted with you or artists interacted with you or you're inspired by certain other art forms and different genres, write them down because then you have sort of a notebook of, uh, of anecdotes, of st stories where you could start uh, an about story, where you could share because these are, remember, the transporters. Your story could become someone else's story through the things, how you're going to describe the emotion and your point of vision. So make this part of your art routine, getting familiar with words and also read a lot of art stories. I mean, it's all there online, artists that inspire you, read their blogs or read their um, artist statements, read what words can you see that structure can you see how they've laid out their words in the narrative for arc and why is it interesting to read and why is it totally boring make conclusions and what can you apply to your own art story using that narrative arc as a framework so that you can see how you can structure your narrative let's um, have a look at pitch Pitching, of course, is uh, uh, could be different shapes and sizes. You can do an online pitch that's through an email or an in-person pitch that you are, you know, and pitch, of course, is a short, quick way to get people's attention. Well, that's the intent. If you do well, it's a, you want to get people's attention quickly. So just using that right introduction that you get people's attention. <clears throat> and people, you know, if you are pitching to a gallery or for an event or for, you know, uh, at an opening, people are distracted. How can you draw them in? What's your opening statement? Could be a quote, could be a point of vision that's a little bit controver controversial so that you're drawing people in. You tell them who you are in a pitch if this is something that you want to promote your work or to sign up for a, a be part of a commission or for a deal. And you only have a few words to do this. What are you going to be sharing? What do you do and why do you do it? So those are the important ingredients of a pitch. And then the whole idea is for them to want to find out more. And this is what you should put, be putting on your homepage as well. It's the pitch of about you. So they want to know. So just mention in your story that maybe you've won a certain art prize, your validation. If they want to read more, they can go to your elaborate about page. There's a link that can go to the about page. So use your cred the credits that you've earned, even if it's a local art prize or you know something that someone said about your work. It adds validation, add that to your story, and then people um, will take a long, you know, more time and are more interested, and they want to know more. And storytelling is great for that. You know, you all know, you know, good storytellers. It's like, wow, tell me more. You turn the chapter, turn the chapter. You can't put down the book. That's what it should feel like. If you just break down the email pitch, because we'll be emailing more than we actually in-person pitching uh, in this uh, phase, and uh, you know, email is our form of uh, communication with, a, you know, a, with different uh, projects that you're doing, or whether you have an email list you're emailing, you want to tell people about a new body of work or not about an exhibition that you're doing. Usually, the preferred uh, way of communication now is an email, but actually, your email is a story. It starts with the introduction. You want to draw people in. Why is it worth them reading them? It's your subject line. That's the title of the book. Why should people be reading this? And you usually spend more, should spend more time on that subject line than on anything else. Because if they're not even going to be opening the email, all your work has been for nothing. So spend time getting the right words, the right headline, the right title for your email. Uh, even also for your uh, presentation materials. It's always that, what is you going to put in that heading so that people are enticed to read further? 
And then we have the body of your email. That's where you can tell your story. And depending on what the purpose is of that email, the signature, you could add branding elements like your little signature. You can add an image which evokes also emotion that adds to your story. And then the PS of an email, that's usually the subject and the PS, that's what people are reading of emails. How can you put an epilogue or a call to action or make your point in your PS of your emails so that people want to either click on a button or there's a, a URL so that they go to another space where you can tell more of your story. Sending a sales, there's different kinds of uh, emails that you can send. There's all different uh, structures that you could use. I thought I'd just focus more on the sales email. So if you have a new body of work and you want to actually sell it uh, through an online space and you're sending a literal email or uh, you are have presentation materials that you're going to be sending, there's a whole structure of how you communicate your story. It starts with getting people's attention. First of all, because we're distracted, they get in the email, you know, it's, you want to, in the bookshop, for example, what cover is going to jump at you? Is it the artwork that's on it? Is it the title that's on it? Is it the author that's uh, there? What are you, how are you going to get people's interest? How are you going to uh, get people's attention? How are you going to keep the interest so that they actually open up the email or put down their drink and listen to you at an in-person event? Really, how can you engage? Can you, what can you say? Then creating desire. Like, oh, this is something that I would love to have on my wall. How, what words can you use? Uh, what part of your story or your creative process can you choose use to create that desire? And then conviction, like, yeah, so there's decision, decisions being made, and then bring them to action. Just broken it down briefly, because this is something I teach in my course uh, quite elaborately. So just for you to realize that it's not just, I'm writing an email, I have a new uh, collection, or I have a new uh, presentation. Make it, tell it like a story. You are wanting to share why, you know, you want to reach your goal. So you want to share why you are um, writing all these words and so that you make it inviting. The subject line is getting the attention. The interest you'll use, the body. Why are you talking to the person reading the email? It's like, why are you talking to me? Why, what is this of interest to me? So you're making, uh, it, explaining, you know, what it's inspirational. It's the right words that you're using. You're transporting them through that story. And what do I need to do? So do I really want this? So in the body of text, that's the desire. So the, what do I need to do will come later. First, it's desire. Do I really need or want this? They'll be asked them, you know, is this desirable? Do I want this on my wall? Do I want to wear this? Is this something that, uh, that uh, uh, relates to uh, me? It can have different... Uh, um, emotional uh, triggers with people and you can use uh, the right words but also adding the photography and that's sort of the exclamation mark that people say whoa yeah I really see it now you've sketched an image in your presentation but now also see it uh, through a photo through that image that endorses your story and at the end every story starts uh, has an action if you are selling uh, your message, what is it that you want me to do? There's either a link, there's a button, there's a call me back, or, you know, shall we connect on a Zoom call? There is an action step. So that's the sort of the makeup, the ingredients of a pitch. How are you going to be pitching? And that's also when you're in a gallery space, getting attention, getting that interest, causing desire, sharing your story, sharing what inspired you, what uh, why you made certain decisions, uh, having that conviction, showing people what's possible, that's usually with your photography or your lighting and people see it in the setting, and then action. Go to my website, here's the gallerist, I'm in that corner, come and speak to me. There's a payment plan, there's a, a possibility for me to show it to you on your home, whatever action you want people to take, definitely add that to your pitch. 
And then we have as the third is the product. You have uh, your finished product and you want to share your story through that product presentation. And once again, this could be in an online or offline space, could be at an opening, at a presentation, at a fair, at a, or at a booth that you have, um, and using those intentional words to describe your work. Allowing people to see the world through your eyes. And you can use words are powerful for that, your process, your inspiration. And then being really clear what your goal is. What is your goal of that presentation? Is it something that you just want people to look more at your gallery? Or is it that you want them to go over into selling? Actually wanting to purchase. And then you need to communicate how they do that. So adding that part, making that part of your messaging. And then using the describe emotion and point uh, that I explained. And then adding that call to action. So those are different ingredients of a good listing. Something thing that you want to use to promote and sell your products. Some other ingredients for you to consider is, of course, having the right image. So you have an Etsy shop or you have a shop on your website, adding that right image, elevating your work through good photography. Can't stress that enough. That's already a story in itself. Showing it in context, in on a wall, in a space, in a, you know, if people can see it, making desire yes i can see that on my space yes it's something that uh, i would uh, love to have adding the heading to your uh, listing that's like the title of the book that brings them in this is an original art piece it's a or it's a limited edition reproductions it's a oil paste uh, oil mixed media piece um, inspired by you know make sure those heading words are enticing and drawing people into and adding to your work and then the description, what we just looked at, the price, making that really clear. Whether you're adding prices or not, that's up to you. Uh, and then clear expectations. So this is an art listing, um, should entail these details. Some bullet points for you to go through at, when it comes to listing and sharing your art in a presentational space. You can go through them and sort of like a checklist. Those intentional words, uh, that you can use because and just to close off the section is people have questions get into the mind of your reader what is it that pe you want people to know and to understand before they go and make a purchase people have all kinds of questions just see how what would you be thinking if you're on a space you love a certain product whether that's you know something a low-end product or a, a high-end product what goes through your mind don't just think I've put it out there, finished my piece, and I'm just hoping it's going to be selling. Get into the mind and the thoughts of people and what words can you use to build a bridge in your communication, taking away their objections. You know, they thinking, okay, this is uh, 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 with the shipping, with the refunds, with the, is it framed, is it unframed, is it, um, uh, is there a payment plan, all these objections they might have to not do it how can you address that in your story in your description that you are writing online or even if you're sharing it in person and that's what uh, Ramon shared two weeks ago as well he comes from it's the sculpture from the Netherlands please uh, if you haven't listened to his podcast please go and have a listen it's podcast number 40 and he comes from a corporate space of sales and marketing and how he's used that in his art business and how he, whether, you know, is going to an exhibition or when he's doing it online, has his story ready. What is it that he's going to be sharing if someone asks him, tell me about your art. Oh, so I hear you're an artist. Oh, I hear you're a sculptor. What do you do? How are you going to tell people that that entices them, gets their attention, draws them in and asks them, have them saying, oh, please tell me more. So having you can prepare that. And it doesn't have mean that you need to be some kind of, you know, cloning a story. But you, the more prepared you are, you know, when you won't be a lot at a loss for words or be nervous, you'll have some context to share people, share with people. This is Tyle Duncan. She's uh, an artist that uh, works in uh, um, uh, 
in different styles and uh, themes. And just to show you, this is how she sets up her product descriptions and adds a personal note. She's decided, you know, she's got that set up where she says note from tile, uh, which shares her inspiration for certain kinds of piece. As you see, it's a clear listing. There's a title, there's the price. It's what it is. There's uh, the note from her, which is a personal note and also very relevant to this time. She mentions COVID and how everyone's been locked, uh, locked up and how she's made this collection so to give people outings and um, to have some, um, let's see how she puts it, um, hope that you'll be able to escape and um, for brighter days ahead for this new series, Beach series. Thank you for a moment for taking looking at my work so she's added that personal note which always people are making buying art from people from real people so using those uh, storytelling elements of describing emotion and making points the dip in a narrative arc deciding where you want your uh, what is it that you want your audience to know and then adding that personal uh, elements to it your experiences of art, how you've encountered or what you've experienced uh, in the good, the bad and the beautiful. Choose certain uh, anecdotes and how can you incorporate that uh, in a story. And I know we're not all award-winning writers. Uh, we all need help. And there are people that are specialized in content. So what really helps is that you um, make a concept of uh, your uh, narrative of your story and then have someone look at it maybe you have a friend or you can go to Fiverr or Upwork and have people that are experts in this area and have them hone your story even if it's just for grammar if it's just for just to so that you can see it from a different uh, point of vision uh, whether it's that you're using the right kinds of words this is an app uh, or a URL it's a a headline analyzer you can type in a headline and it gives you an uh, analyzes whether it's a strong headline or not so this is something if you are uh, working through your headlines as i said you sometimes take longer with your headline because that is drawing people into your story um, you can fill it in here one of my favorite apps and also places i spend a lot of time in is uh, grammarly you can have the free, then it just looks at uh, basic grammar and uh, spelling. But uh, there's a paid version as well, which is amazing just to see whether you're writing uh, interesting content, whether, you know, you could say a sentence a little bit more uh, interesting, whether, you know, the grammar is correct, etc. So have a look at uh, Grammarly. And then the other way I spend a lot of time is the thesaurus, is getting synonyms, Finding interesting words. I um, love being a word detective. I love words. Words are art forms in themselves. And if that's something that uh, inspires you to write down words. I've got words everywhere on sticky notes and in books. Because uh, in words, you can say something in 300 words. But how about if you find one word that just says it? What you're trying to say. So be a collector of words. And uh, finding interesting ways to share information so that... Um, it stays and lingers. So those are the places. There are many more apps. I don't know if people are here. Um, in the group, uh, in the session that have other apps that maybe you're using as a text writer or content writer and that you want to share, then please throw them in the comment area because uh, there are many uh, apps out there. And then I'm going to just check out and see if there's any questions. Hopefully this is giving a little bit of insight on the different ways that you can use um, storytelling. Uh, let's see if there's any questions. I'll start here. I see Ditto. Is it wise to tell the price of an art, art piece? Because it differs. In an exhibit, there's also commission for the art gallery. So the art is more expensive. This is an interesting uh, question, uh, Ditto. First of all, is it wise to put your pricing on your website well let's say that's what your question is put it on your website i'm of the opinion that if you can substantiate your price what i mean by that have you given your audience 
that doesn't know you or knows a little bit about you because they've been following you on social media, enough clues, enough reason, enough validation why something costs a certain amount. So if you've been adding, uh, showing your process, you've been showing um, your inspiration, you've been sharing uh, more about that art piece, uh, then you are telling them, taking them from your social to your website, you have beautiful photography, you see it in a setting, you see it uh, close up, people can really engage as if they are standing right there in a gallery. And then you can add your price to it, especially if it's high in products. And people say, yeah, I understand this is, it's validated why it's this price. Then that's a wise situation and totally doable to sell it on that place. But if you haven't given them enough validation because your photography is not right at the level or your description is not quite clear or you don't have your sales channels uh, up to level yet, it's very difficult to substantiate prices. So because I meet a lot of uh, frustrated artists, they've made beautiful work, they've spent some a lot of time and their energy and then they put it online put the price which is totally reasonable for the price that they're putting but they haven't had their marketing in the right place so people haven't had that full experience of their art pieces and then they wonder well you know people aren't buying it or they're saying it's too expensive it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with your art but it has to do with your communication and your marketing so that needs to be in balance and then Definitely, if you're growing also as an emerging experienced artist, you've built a name for yourself, you've been on platforms, you've been in the newspaper, you've been on podcasts, you can validate yourself through your about a story, then people understand why it costs a certain way. If you're not there yet, and we're all in progress, process, then you say, you know, you connect with me about the pricing. And then you book a Zoom call where you can add validation. They can see you. They can see the painting or the art piece in a certain space. And then you can do your sales, more of your sales story, creating conviction, creating desire, creating understanding about your process that you need those little extra steps. So then I wouldn't add them to your website. But it all depends on your communication um, choices. And then about the pricing over the board. I know if you're selling on your website and your price is less the commission that a gallerist is asking, the gallerist will not be amused. So usually gallerists, if they are representing you and you are selling your art on your, your own platforms, the price needs to be the same across the board because you know it's a given that people then are going to go for the cheap pricing and they're going to buy the painting from you. So whether you are at a fair or in the, you know, especially when gallery representation is there, it should be the same price across all, across the board. Uh, let's see, any more questions? Uh, Lena says there was the question you were writing your artist statement but you weren't quite happy with it or you were struggling with it um, that is to find the whys and I think that's where the um, the real juice is is the why why are you doing things why are things motivating you and you can add a personal story you can add you know what um, a moment or an anecdote so hopefully this session is going to help you Lena to add that to your artist statement and your artist statement can evolve it's something that will grow with you as your experience uh, grows as your bodies of work uh, become more mature as you know you start getting more an idea of who your art audience is it's a very dynamic document and you you can have a statement for yourself as a person your point of vision on life your convictions your philosophy your uh, or for a body of work so that will change as your body of work changes. But definitely adding that layer of the why. And then I did see, did I said falling action? Question mark. That was with the narrative arc. When after the climax has been reached. So you have the epiphany. You have a moment where you think, okay, now 
there's uh, all those actions, all those steps that you've done, all the struggles that you've been through comes to some kind of um, climax. Then the falling action is that you come to some resolution. That's what falling action means. So it's not literally, but more that the climax has been really re reached and there's you, you don't on the storyline, you're not going to go to another climax unless there's another chapter to your story. Hopefully that's clear, Adida. Good, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the session and that this has uh, helped you. Uh, let's continue the conversation also in the community. If you have an artist statement and you think, oh, I want to share that, you know, not in, that, uh, in, the, in the art world yet, but just in the community, then please feel free to uh, share it here in the Help I'm Artist community so we can read about each other or please fill in your URL in the comment area if you want to share your website so we can have a look at each other's work. We are here to learn. We are all in progress. We all uh, are here to uh, you know, improve. Um, and so great that you could join the session. Right, uh, Dido. So it's not negative. No, it's more just the ending of the story. Thank you guys for uh, being here. Uh, also, people watching the replay, uh, please use the comment area if you have comments, uh, you know, after we have ended or if you have more questions, uh, let's keep the conversation going. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to um, be here in the session. And I wish you a wonderful afternoon or evening wherever you are in the world and hope to see you in the next session. <laughs> Bye, guys.